So this time we're going to talk about laser engraving drinkware. So Patriot Coolers is sponsoring this video. They were kind enough to send me an arsenal of all these different kinds and shapes of drinkware because I told them, hey, I'm going to do a video on engraving all kinds of drinkware and not everything is a 30 ounce tumbler, right? You know, you've got uh, you've got different shape stuff. You've got stuff with uh, very, very odd shape stuff that can s screw up in your rotary, but we're going to get into that and we're going to show you how to take care of that. We're probably even going to get into some glass, but I wanted to talk a little bit about the sponsors of this video, Patriot Coolers. They are, it's a very cool company. I, I found them because a customer had brought me some of them and wanted me to engrave them. And I said, wow, these are really cool. And then I looked up on their website and I was like, oh, and they're also giving back uh, to veterans. Uh, every, every portion of every sale goes back to help servicemen and women and, and veterans. And I just thought that was great. So I reached out to them and I told them that I was about to do this video and see if they want to partner. So, uh, you know, just disclaimer, these were all sent to me uh, for the purpose of using in this video. And at the end of the video, I'm actually going to be giving away all the different cups that we engrave in this video, and I'll tell you how to do that at the end of the video. So if you want to learn how to laser engrave all kinds of drinkware, then this is the video for you on Laser Engraving 911. All right, let's get this party started. So. First, we're gonna talk about tools of the trade. Before we get into setting up on the rotary tool, preparing artwork and all that good stuff, we're gonna talk about the basic tools that you need to engrave cups that you will use over and over again. So, uh, these aren't in any particular order. I'm just gonna show you the things that I would use on a cup run, on a drinkware run, whether it's glass or tumblers or whatever it is this is what I, what I need in my arsenal. So here we go. So first thing you're going to need, a caliper. All right. You can get a caliper. Uh, I'm going to list all the links to all these tools in the description below the video. It uh, doesn't really matter what brand you get. I wouldn't get too cheap of a caliper and I really don't think it's necessary to get too expensive of, of a caliper, but you're definitely going to need a caliper. And that's going to be for measuring the diameter of the cup that you're working on. Next, you're going to want like a rigid 12 inch machinist ruler. So this is a steel ruler. Um, some people like working in millimeters. I like working in inches and tenths of an inch. So that's what this one's set up for. This comes in real handy. Next, we're going to want a level, a little bubble level. These are on Amazon as well. Super cheap, uh, not very expensive. This one's magnetic. Um, that comes in handy because you can actually, when you're not using it, stick it to the side of your laser so you know where it's at all the time. It's not going to stick to stainless steel, but we don't really care about that anyway. Uh, we just want something to set on our bottle when it's in the rotary to get it level. Okay. And you know I'm going to talk about it. Blue painter's tape. Yes, the blue painter's tape. I love this stuff. I use it all the time for all kinds of applications, including laser engraving drinkware. So make sure you, if you haven't already, get yourself some blue painter's tape. You're going to see why, why we have that later on in the video. For the cleanup process, I have to say, uh, I have seen a lot of different ways that people clean up their engravings afterwards on uh, powder coated drinkware. I used to be a Zep fan, Zep 505 or whatever it's called for years. And I use that and it worked pretty good. I never had any complaints until I actually tried some LA Awesome. So this is the product that you're going to want to clean up your laser engraving on powder coated tumblers uh, when you're done. And we're going to show you that in the video too. Folks, I am definitely in the LA's totally awesome camp now. Um, it took me years to get there, but um, this is the product that you want to get. You can get it at Dollar Tree. You can buy it on Amazon. And get it all over the place but this is the stuff you're going to want except no substitute and then also to uh, clean off the engraving after you spray it with the la totally awesome uh, i use a toothbrush yep i use a beat up look at that nasty thing 
I use a toothbrush and I don't use magic erasers. I don't use green scotch bright pads or rags. I like to use a toothbrush and that is because when the cleaner is on there, I like to scrub, brush the engraving so I get in all the little tiny stuff because sometimes I'm working on you know, really fine detailed graphics and I want to get all up in there. Uh, I want to make sure that that logo is as shiny and like the day it came off the factory floor. I want to, I want to see that stainless steel shine. So um, I like to use a toothbrush. That is, you know, my preference. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with using a magic eraser or uh, something else, but as long as you're getting down in there, and always, you know, this has not failed me. And so get yourself a pack of toothbrushes. Um, it's not going to hurt the powder coating uh, surface at all in any way whatsoever. And either will the LA is totally awesome. So don't worry. You can scrub the heck out of that thing. It'll get going. And last but not least, a little flexible ruler. It doesn't have to be big, but it's really nice to have a flexible ruler. That way you can... Um, you know, when you're, you know, sizing things and you're trying to figure out, you know, how big the logo should be, what's acceptable, what's overkill. Uh, it's really nice to have a little plastic flexible ruler. I would say like six inches is totally fine. Um, but yeah, this is also another great ruler to have when you're doing drinkware. All right. So let's some, start off with something that a lot of people already know. I was going to start off with one of the hard ones, but I think we should just go over the basics. So I've got my Patriot tumbler here and I'm using an Epilog M2 Fusion and this is their rotary tool. Your rotary tool may be a little different. Your software may be different, but we're going to go over the basics here. Most rotary tools um, have the drive wheels here and then they have the free spinning wheels here and they're usually adjustable back and forth so you can accommodate longer uh, or shorter items and a lot of rotary tools today will have a clip that goes inside the lip to help keep the cup against the drive wheels here this clip on this rotary and most of them are removable and we will remove it later uh, because we will not need it on some of the other items that we're doing but to, for this cup we're going to go ahead and leave that in and you're just going to take those two screws. Um, you can add a little bit of throw so you can go a little bit deeper with it if you want. For this application on this cup, I'm just going to leave it right flush right here. So what we want to do is we want to get our cup, lift up the tab, put it up there, and then we want to bring our back wheels right on the end there. And we want to make sure that this is level. So that is where... <clears throat> this bubble level comes in. We talked about this earlier. So I'm not even focused yet or anything. Right now, I'm just concerned about making sure this cup is level. And as you can see, it is not currently level. So to level it, I'm just going to bring up the back until that bubble is in the center. Right? there and now it's level it's that easy and then I can put this right here for later and now I'm gonna go ahead and focus my laser lens to the cup so I'm gonna go into focus and Sometimes, depending on where my last position was, the focus point will be not where I need it to be, but that's okay because this rotary tool on the epilogue uh, corners up in the bed, um, and that's something to consider so I can just move it temporarily over to where I want to focus to. And I'm going to bring my Z-axis up until it touches my focal point. Right there, that's in focus. I'm gonna take my little focal tool off and I'm gonna slide this back in the corner because that's where this lives. Now, I know on some of the other models of CO2 lasers, your rotary tool is free 
floating around and you can't corner it up and it's just laying on the cut bed or whatever like this. And you definitely do not want to have, you know, there's a couple axes that you need to, to be mindful of. If your rotary tool doesn't corner up like this, then you need to be sure that you're not off kilter, right? You need to make sure that that you are perfectly straight with this bar right here. So however you want to go about doing that, um, make sure that not only are you focused, because the, rot the rotary tool is going to keep this this way, but you, you don't want to be off, off tilted like that on your bed. So you need to make sure that you are perpendicular with, with your gantry, okay? So now that we focus to the cup, we're going to go ahead and find out where we want to put our logo. So one of the things to consider now that we've leveled and focused this, I can take this out, is that tumblers often have a logo on them, okay? Now, you either want to be, your, your engraved logo either wants to be perfectly centered with their lo with the with the the brand logo or exactly centered on the opposite side it is not common practice to just throw it anywhere on the cup um, the professional way to do it is to find out where the center of this logo is if if you're choosing to put it above the company logo or make sure that you're on exactly the center on the other on the other side so if you flip this up you're still within center. So what I like to do, uh, I'm gonna be putting these on the same side as the Patriot logo. So I know already, because I measured, what I did was I took my little bendy rule, remember we talked about that, and I measured their logo, right? I measured how wide their logo was and then I found the center, which is actually the center of the R. Really easy on this one. So it's right there, that's the center. So, I'm going to put this in with the logo facing up, and I'm going to jog over with my, you can see my red laser beam, I'm going to jog temporarily over to make sure that I'm lined up with that R. And I'm going to turn my cup until that red laser beam is lined right in the middle of that R, and then I'm going to reset back to where I was. Another thing is one of the measurements that you're gonna to wanna to take is the total area that you have to work with. We're not gonna be doing the style of where you're gonna build a page based on the whole width of the cup and draw ruler lines and all that stuff in Corel Jaw. We're just gonna use the center center method. Uh, it's the fastest way in my opinion. Once you get it down, you won't need to draw any page sizes or set any rulers or do any of that stuff. But one of the things that we do need is we need the total height here of what what we are our real call it our real estate of how big how tall we can have our logo. So on this cup, it's 3.7, <laughs> Okay, so that's our total height that we have to work with. Okay, so now I'm over at Corel Draw, which is what the epilogue laser engraver likes to talk to and I'm going to pick a logo. And I think for this first one, we'll just pick the laser engraving 911 logo. Something to keep in mind is these are all vector files. Okay, these are not bitmap files or JPEGs. These can all be sized up or down indefinitely because they're vector files. I always work with vector files unless I'm doing photos, then I work with bitmaps. So I'm just gonna be working with our, the laser engraving 911 logo on this one. So we're going to get rid of all the rest of these for this one. Now, you saw my laser bed. This is an exact representation of my laser bed. And you know that my rotary tool is right here. And I'm just drawing this box to show you where my rotary tool is. It's cornered up, up here in the corner. So I need to rotate and the cup is laying this way with the top over here. So I need to rotate my graphic. 90 degrees, like that. Um, and before I do that, I guess it's easier to size it. So remember we had 3.7. So on 30 ounce tumblers, I usually like to go 2.8 inches wide um, if I can. 
uh, but that also depends. So if we go 2.80, oops, make sure you lock your, <laughs> see up here, make sure you lock your, your constrain your proportions. Um, so we want to go to 2.80 inches, okay? I can get rid of this box now. I was just using that for demonstration purposes. So, and then I want to rotate my graphic 90 degrees because I want it because this is the way that the top of the cup is over here. And I know now that I have two point, it, this logo, once I made it 2.8 inches wide, is 2.866 inches tall. So what I need to do, because we're going to go back over, we're, going, we're doing center center, what I need to do is I'm going to take 2.866 and divide it by 2 to get the middle of my graphic. So that's 1.43 inches is the middle of this graphic. Let's go back over before we send this over to the laser and look at the cup one more time. So remember, we were just sizing our graphic there. And here's with this little handy dandy ruler, or you can use the other one, is going to come. This is where this is going to come in handy. So we know that our logo is 2.866 inches tall, right? So if we lay this on here, we just, and this is intense, 2.86. So that's like basically 2.85, right? And we know that the middle of that graphic is 1.43. So what I want to do is I want to move, see where my red laser is? I'm at 1.4, you know, 3, just a little bit over. And I can see that my total length of the logo, it's going to be down here. And the top of it's going to be where that ruler ends. I don't want that. I want it to be... See, I'm looking at the 2.866. I'm, I'm keeping my eye on where the, to the total length is. And now that I've moved it to where I want it, which is about right there, I need to move my center point back to 1.433. So I'm going to jog that over because I have it on center engraved and move it to 1.433. Right there. So now, if that's my center, the logo is not going to go past that, and it's going to go down to 2.8. And actually, now that I take another look, I'm going to shift it down just a little bit more from the top, and then readjust one more time to 1.433, and then lock that center place in. So now, I know, because I use the ruler, and we know how tall our graphic is, that that logo is going to have really nice spacing between here and here, right where I want it. And that was the whole setup. So you don't need to keep doing that every time. That was just the setup for this run of cups. Now that I've been goofing around with that, it's always good to double check. I'm going to jog back over, make sure I'm still on the center of the R, which I am. And I'm going to reset right back to where I was. Now, let's go back over, show you some laser settings. Okay, here's my settings that I use on my 120 watt laser for engraving powder coated tumblers. I use center center, you can see that's checked there, uh, center engraving. My DPI is set at 400. My speed is at 60 and my power is at 100. Keep in mind that you may have a lower wattage laser, and that's fine. You just uh, will probably have to slow down your speed um, slower to make sure that you're getting through the powder coating in one pass. You don't want to have to run the job twice because most of the time rotaries, uh, unless you've got it really fine-tuned, will not go back to the exact position on the second run and you might get like a doubling up or like a ghosting effect that you don't want so you really want to create a setting that gets through any level of powder coating in one single pass that's your ultimate goal so some testing may be needed with your laser to make sure that you can get through 
uh, all powder coating in one pass. So that is the settings that I use for powder coated tumblers. So at this point, all we need to do, close the door, check out the time. So this cup is going to take, and it's listed on the epilogue screen over here. This job is going to take two minutes and 55 seconds. So that's another thing to factor in. How long is your each cup going to take? Um, try to factor that in. That's pretty common. Uh, I find that tumblers, most tumblers, take about two, on my machine, take about two and a half to three minutes each. That's pretty standard for, uh, for an epilogue machine. Some of the newer machines can do it even faster. But let's go ahead and watch this get done. And I'll speed things up for you. So here we are. This is the cup that just came out of there. And as you can see, this is really common for blue colored cups. Uh, you're going to see some residue left over. Don't worry, you didn't do anything wrong. Uh, this, is, this is why we have the cleaner. So we need to go over and get this residue left off. Then we can get that nice stainless steel shine that everybody wants. But this is very common. For it to come out like this especially reds and blues you know if you don't get this probably you've got a real thin layer of powder coating on there patriot coolers they put a nice thick layer on all of their products and i really like that but this is not acceptable to give to the customer uh, we need to get this looking spit spot right but you know you know what's the funny thing is i've actually gone in stores um, some big name stores and seen laser engraved cups that look like this on the shelf yeah literally people trying to sell this and i'm talking like big major stores i'm not going to name them here but i've seen stuff that looks like this sometimes i've even seen their little logo down here where nobody even took the time to clean it off this is not acceptable to give your customer we still have one more step to do let's go do that now all right so the next step is we've got to clean that residue off and uh, we're over here at mr nasty sink and uh, this is where I clean off all my cups and what the, what not. So uh, what we're going to do is use our handy dandy toothbrush and our LA is totally awesome because it's totally awesome. So what I do is I want to tilt the cup down so it's hanging over the sink and I'm just going to spray a little bit of this on there. And before even scrubbing at all, just a couple of sprays, look, it almost completely comes right off by itself. Like literally it just kind of melted off of there. And then I just take my, and that's about it. Turn on some water. Just so you know, I don't just wipe this off and then repackage it. I actually uh, rinse the chemical off of the cup. Okay. <clears throat> then I dry the cup. Okay, and the inside, just give it a little boom. And that is what we're looking for right there. It's perfectly aligned with the logo, right distance that we set, and that's how it should look. It shouldn't have any of that residue left off of there. Now, here's a tip for production, okay? When I have, you know, 50, 60, 80, 100, 200 cups, and they're all the same cups, and I'm just using this, this is not an engraved cup. What I will do is I will obviously engrave a bunch and then I will stack them like this, okay? And I'll get all, I'll keep stacking them until I, I can, you know, as many as I can hold, okay? And I'll corner them up right here in the sink to where I'm holding the stack out like this and I'll spray, I'll make sure all the logos are aligned and I'll spray all the way down the run 
and watch that residue come right off. And then I'll literally, like I'm scrubbing a giant tube, I'll do them all at once and then actually rinse them all off at once and dry them off. That is a, a huge time saver for me than grabbing one cup at a time, doing that, putting it back, grabbing another one. Um, but man, th doing it that way saves you so much time than, you know, once again, we're going back to workflow. Um, so there's a little tip for you on how to clean a bunch of cups at once. All right. Now we're gonna move on to something a little bit trickier. And I will do my best to try to explain why and how to deal with something strange like this. So this is the Patriot Cooler Canteen, 20 ounce canteen. It's really cool. Nice stainless top. Um, just a really cool shape. But <clears throat> you may be uh, running into some issues uh, when working with this on the rotary tool. And to sh demonstrate the issue and also give you the solution, we are going to use the blue painter's tape. So the way I like to use blue painter's tape when I'm working on drinkware is as a, a skin over it so I don't mess up the bottle. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this canteen a skin right now so we can practice on it without hurting the bottle. I'm gonna cover the whole bottle so we can goof around and show you some examples of what happens if you just try to put this in your rotary tool without making some adjustments to your graphic. And we'll see what it shouldn't look like, which I've seen also uh, products engraved the way they shouldn't be and what it should look like. So blue painter's tape is your friend. I've wrapped so many different pieces of drinkware just to do a test on it to make sure that before I do the big run, everything is looking tip top. Um, I feel confident that I'm not hurting the bottle in any way and I'm still getting the bottle in there. Now it's really important that you dial in a setting for this blue painter's tape on your laser with your wattage, whatever that is. And it's okay if you overlap a little bit it's not going to hurt the bottle and then I just kind of smooth it down a little bit so now I have an, all this real estate to practice on um, but you're going to want to dial in a setting for blue tape just use some put some blue tape on a piece of wood or whatever and you want the laser to just turn the tape white that's it you don't want it to break through um, it's a very light setting I think my, my setting on my 120 watt laser is a, is a hundred speed with 10% power. Uh, and it, it could probably even go a little bit lower and it's 300 DPI. That's my setting that I use, but you'll have to lay some tape down on a piece of wood and just do some tests until you get a nice white mark. This, this, uh, this tape will, will laser etch white with the correct setting. You do not want to break through because then you'll ruin the bottle when you're screwing around. But anyway, that's how I use the blue tape. I put it on the bottle and I go do all my tests, my resizing, all that stuff. And then when I'm happy with the result, I just peel off the tape, run the job and run the rest of the cups in the job. So let's go ahead and put this in the rotary and we'll pick a graphic to put about, you know, right here. And let's see what happens. All right, so now that we've got our position set up, I know that the logo we used on the last one was you know 2.8 inches about you know about that wide i'm not sure if i really want it that wide on this one so i'm going to set it to 2.5 inches wide on the screen which is just a little bit of a change it's just we don't have quite as much you know it's it's not such a wide bottle so i want to size it appropriately to the bottle so i'm going to go with 2.5 2.5 inches total width on this bottle. And that's what I'm gonna put in Corel Draw. I'm gonna resize it right now. It's already set right where I want it. We're already level. So I'm gonna go over to Corel and do that now. I know you can't see me, but I'm over here and I'm changing the width to 2.50 inches. And I'm going to print, but before I do, I'm going to switch my laser settings to that blue 
tape proofing setting is what I call it, and it's 100 speed, 10% power, 300 DPI, and I'm going to send it over to the laser. <clears throat> now, some of you who have been doing this a while are probably already guessing what's going to happen. For the purpose of this video, I want to demonstrate what will happen and then how to correct for it. So I'm going to turn on my exhaust fume extractor now and we're going to run the job and I'll speed it up and then we'll take a look. Holy crap, what just happened? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that that logo is not 2.5 inches wide. And that has to do with the fact of the diameter of where, what is resting on the drive wheels, okay? And there is a calculation on how to compensate for that so you can get an accurately sized, non-stretched out, non-whacked out logo like this on a piece of drinkware like this. I mean, this thing's got a lot going on. It's got a tapered top. It's a real small diameter. Then it goes wide. Then it, then it goes back down. So we're going to use this other side after we do some... Uh, uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna go do some equations. I'm gonna show you how to do that, and then we're gonna come back, and we're gonna modify our graphic to compensate for the fact that that of that diameter on the rotary tool. It's storyboard time, <laughs> and we get to use the caliper too. Okay, so I am no good at math. I don't like this kind of stuff, but in this business, you got to learn a little bit of it. So I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible for you. Uh, and this equation works for all strangely shaped objects. It's actually a really cool equation. And I will put, uh, if you want to email me or shoot me a message, I can send you a PDF with it all laid out. Uh, to help you with these kind of issues. But right now, I'm just going to draw it out. So, we've got our canteen bottle, right? And the first measurement we need is the diameter of the top. Okay? So, we're going to take out our caliper and we're going to measure the diameter of the top. We'll just call it 1.90, okay? 1.90 inches. Now, we need to measure the diameter of the area that we want to work in. If we want to work down here, and we're putting a logo down here, we want to do this. Now, this one's a little bit tricky because it tapers down, but, you know, either way, the next, the next number we need is is the diameter right here, basically where the center of our logo is. So I'm going to measure that. And that measurement is 3.16. Call it 3.16, and that's right here. It's important that B is the area that you want to engrave. 3.16. One six inches. Now we need the width of our graphic, which we set to. So we have the laser engraving nine one one, right? The width of the logo we set to 
inches. So what we want to do is divide A and B, so 1.90 divided by 3.16 times C, the width of our logo, which is 2.5 inches. And what we come up with is 1.5 inches. That is the new width, only the width, not the height. We're not changing the height. We're only changing the width. And what is that going to do? That is going to squash our logo on the screen. It's going to look nuts. But that is the, the new width. Once again, not, change, not changing the, the height, just the new width, we're going to squash down to 1.50. So let's go ahead and go over to Corel and do that and send it back over and re-engrave in the same area on the other side. See what happens. Here we are. All right. So now we're back over at Corel and I'm going to zoom in here. And remember our target, we were at 2.5 inches wide. And you can see that right here. We need to uncheck the constraint proportions and we need to change the width to 1.5. Ah! That is weird, I understand. And now we're going to rotate it 90 degrees and we're going to send it over again with the blue tape proof setting. See, we've got our settings, 100 speed, 10% power, 300 DPI, center, center, raster. Let's send it. We've got our, our warped out stretch logo, which by the way, just so you know, that logo that was supposed to be 2.5 inches engraved for four inches wide and it's super stretched out and weird so let's get that looking nice so we're going to use the opposite side there i'm going to go ahead and turn on the fume extractor and let's watch it work and another thing that i didn't really talk about yet but whenever i have things that feel a little light and that goes this goes for all kinds of uh, drinkware it's always good to have something to use as a weight to put in it. You can use a roll of quarters. You can build your own kind of bar weight like this. Uh, this was an old vape mod from like 20 years ago, but it's really heavy. So I'm just going to put that in there to make sure that it's heavy. So when it's r free rolling on the rollers and it stays pressed against the rollers. I'm sure other rotaries, they might have like special clamps. And another good tip is you want to keep your rotary wheels clean. So like say you were doing a bunch of like steel and you had powder left over from Brilliance Laser Ink and it starts to build up on, on here. That can make the cup slip and then it's, you're, you're going to lose the cup. So you always want to make sure that your cup is nice and heavy and it's pressing down against the wheels. I keep a uh, various tube weights that I've created. Some things I filled with sand and taped them up and uh, so for different diameter openings. So anyways, back to the plan. Let's go see how this new graphic engraves. Boom. That, folks, is how it was supposed to look in the first place. So you can see by warping the graphic to compensate for the smaller diameter of the top of the bottle, which makes it spin faster, right? Which stretches out your graphic. We can easily get a proportionately correct graphic using that equation. Reach out to me if you want to get a PDF of 
a diagram of that equation so you can keep it in your file. Happy to give it to you. Let's go ahead and take this blue tape off now and engrave this sucker for real. All right, so for this next part, we are going to tackle the mug, okay? So for this one, we definitely want to put our, our lip clamp back on to clamp down because we can. Anytime we can use this, we want to use it because it really helps keep it, you know, going. So you have to, you have to think, when, when we're doing cups, I have to always ask the customer, do you want the logo on the front for people that are right-handed? Or for if it's just a single off cup, they might be left-handed and they may want it on the other side. So you, you need to ask these questions. You know, would you like the logo here? Or would you like it on the other side? Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to put a logo right here this is a, a ribbed cup, so unfortunately we don't want to engrave over the ribs because it won't get into the little valleys and it'll look kind of warped and um, so we want to kind of avoid that. But what we could do is we could put the Patriot Coolers logo right here. So first I'm going to measure how wide I think it should be. So I think that, you know, three inches is good for this, three inches wide. So we're gonna put that in here. I'm gonna clamp it down. I'm gonna bring our wheels over. I'm gonna drop the table down a little bit. I'm gonna make sure, just go through the procedure again. Make sure that it's level. It is. I haven't focused yet. Now. The Patriot logo on this one, see I'm always checking for logo, it's actually on the handle, so we don't, there is no logo on either side of this. So we're pretty much free. But what we're not free to do is to have this tilted down. And something to keep in mind, and I'll try to zoom over here, is when this is rotating, depending on how far it has to rotate or, or go up, we want to make sure that that handle does not hit those drive wheels. So we just want to be, I don't know if you can see that. You see, I'm not quite pressed up against there. And I know that right there, no matter where this rotates, like this, it is not going to hit those drive wheels. It's going to clear the drive wheels. So I could put the logo, if I wanted to go straight down, I could put the logo right here right in the front on the side if the customer asked me to. But for this demonstration, I'm gonna put it as if right front and center for a right-handed person so it's facing out. But I need to make sure that this is not crooked, right? It has to be level. So once again, I'm gonna take my bubble level, I'm gonna set it on the handle, and I'm gonna rotate it until it's level, just like that. And now I know that it's safe. And so say I've got 25 of these. I don't want to be doing that uh, every single time. So what I usually do is I'll take some Legos or something and I'll stack them up. I don't know if you can see that. I'll stack them up like right here, ding, 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 to the exact height that this cup should should rest to and I'll just set it there for a second and just quickly tap down to it and then rem and then remove it off to the side so the handle doesn't hit it or anything. So make sure it's level and straight this way. Build yourself something to easily register to and then remove that before you do the engraving. Now let's go ahead and get focused. Well first I'm going to jog back over because we haven't picked our position yet. So let's go ahead and focus.
focus. And what do we have to work with here? We got two inches. Call it 2.10 inches. 1.05 is our middle. Sometimes I'll just leave this ruler right there. It's a little tricky, giving me a hard time. And I'll just move my laser to 1.05, which is right in the middle of the 210, right? And I'll make that my center point right there. Now, let's go ahead and load in the graphic into Corel. All right, so let's bring in our next graphic. Hmm, what should we pick? I like, let's do our inverted Patriot logo with the background knocked out. So the Patriot logo will actually be red and not silver. So we're going to rotate it and we're going to resize it the length to after we <laughs> constrain our proportions, keep lock our ratio. Remember we said we wanted it three inches wide. So it's 0.65 inches tall and three inches wide. We go to print, make sure it's on the setting that I like for powder coating, powder coated tumblers, and I'm going to hit print and send it on over. Now, one of the things I like to do with uh, mugs is I like to go ahead and run the job without the laser on just to make sure that it's not going to hit anything for any reason. So I'll hit go and run the job, but the laser won't fire because the door is open. So let's go ahead and do that now and just double check that everything's working good. That is a successful setup. It's gonna go right back to where it was. It did not go so far as to hit the head. I have it on bottom up, so it's always gonna go this way and then go that way. If I had it the other way, that would swing it, swing the handle down, but it would still, it would still clear, so it'd be okay. So now that we know that that's all aligned and nothing's gonna bump into anything, Let's go ahead and run the job. got to go clean it off. Let's go check it out. Back to old Mr. Yucky Sink. That's what I'm talking about. Clean. Mugs with handles, no problem. All right, folks, we need to have a serious talk. We need to talk about circle logos, round logos on cups. There is a scourge running through the laser engraving industry where folks are taking customers round logo and putting them on drinkware and they end up looking like this the egg logo yes that's right folks <laughs> this is not <laughs> correct and i'm going to show you how to fix that let's get into it time to get out our tools again yep that's right we're going to get out the calculator and we're going to do basic equations. So to stop this from happening, remember how in the last one, how we compensated for the small diameter? Well, on this one, we're going to actually, so we want to try to get that logo to look as round as possible. Okay. It's never going to be perfect, but 
we're kind of dealing with like a parallax type thing where it, it, if, if I were to peel this tape off, the logo would actually be at size. But to the eye, because it's on this curved surface, it looks like an egg. So we need to kind of compensate for that. So to the eye, it looks rounder. And I found that the best way to do that, and you may play with this number here and there, make your small adjustments, but a good starting point, I know this is, this is pretty crazy, but <clears throat> is we want to take the actual graphic, which was supposed to be, okay, this, this graphic is actually 2.8 inches. It's a circle, perfect circle. What I like to do is I like to take the diameter of the top of the cup, 3.96, and I move the decimal point over one and add 0.39 inches to the width. Not the height again, but add. See, now we're enlarging. We're not squashing. We're enlarging to make this look more like a circle. All right, so 2.80 plus point three nine three point nineteen so the new is gonna look on your screen I'm exaggerating here three point nineteen so let's go over to the computer make our adjustment and engrave that new logo on the other side and then we'll compare which one you think looks more like a circle. Okay, here we are. Back over at the computer. So right now, up here, you can see my logo is 2.8 inches. Perfect circle. And I've already got it tilted in the direction that I want. So I'm going to uncheck the lock ratio and I'm going to change the width of my logo to 3.19. You see how I stretch that out? And then I'm going to go ahead and send it over to the cup using my blue tape proofing setting. And we're going to run it and then take a look at it afterwards. Let's run it. Now the trippy thing about this is when you're looking at it from the side, right? When you're looking at it from the side, it looks like, well, it's hard to show on camera, but it looks like we stretched out the logo, right? Because it's really angle dependent. And this is a good starting point. But what's great is that once you actually take it out and set it, because we're trying to make it look round straight on. So that's how it should look to the, if it's sitting there looking at a, you know, a customer's looking at it, that looks much rounder, even though we know that it's actually 3.8 inches wide to make it look round, we stretched it. But as you go, to the side, and you'll see this yourself when you try it, you'll see that it looks stretched, but straight on, it looks much rounder than the egg we did on the other side. <laughs> so it's really kind of an optical illusion is what we're doing, but um, taking that measurement, moving the decimal point and adding it over and stretching it is uh, a great starting point. You may make, need to make little adjustments here and there depending on the diameter of whatever you're working on there's a little trick for you on how to actually make round logos look round on a cylinder here's another little trick for you so we're going to do the patriot logo on this giant 36 ounce sports bottle 
But the customer, let's say it's Patriot Coolers, they want their logo to wrap all the way around and almost touch on the other side. So an easy way to figure out how long to make your logo, and some of you may already know this, and some of you may not. I didn't know it at one point and I'm happy to share it with you. I'm gonna get our handy dandy caliper out and we're going to measure the diameter of this sports bottle, which is three point, we want to be right in the middle, 3.743. So the diameter is 3.743. And we're going to multiply that times pi, 3.14. And that is going to equal 11.75. So what that means is that if I were to cut this bottle in half and open it up and flatten it out, the total length of all the surface area that I have to use is 11.75. So I am going to make my graphic, keeping the ratio locked, I'm going to make it like 11.73 because I don't want it to actually crash into the other side. I could do that, but I'm just going to come over to Corel, make the length of my logo 11.73, and I'm going to start it. I'm going to put it right in the middle here, and I'm going to make sure I'm centered with the R, and that logo is going to wrap all the way around, but it is not going to crash into each other on the other side because we already did the equation. So diameter times pi gives you the, the full length of the surface area, which tells you how long to make your logo. Now what's cool with that is if you have a pattern, all you need is to measure from here to here and then do that calculation. And on your artboard, you can put all kinds of graphics in here different shapes sizes patterns and do like a full wraparound of this area with all kinds of graphics because you know how much surface area you have all right so let's go over to corel and do that real quick okay so i have my standard size logo which is three inches and i'm going to rotate it but this way i'm going to rotate it negative 90 degrees because I have to put the base of the bottle on the drive wheels because it has that little lip, that little dip in lip and I don't want to work off that. So I'm going to actually put the sports bottle facing the other way so the, so the butt will be on the drive wheels. So I'm going to change the direction of my graphic negative 90. Okay because now the top of my bottle is over here. And I've got my lock ratio. I'm going to make the new length 11.73. Wow. I'm going to keep it on the artboard. We're still using center engrave. And I'm going to send that over, make sure I got my settings right. I'm going to send that over to the laser, and I'm going to load up that sports bottle. Let's go do that. So let's go ahead and load this in. A couple things we got to do. I'm going to take out this. We don't need it. And drop our focus down. Lower this wheel because we got to get level again. Remember, bottom of the bottle over here now. Adjust our wheels. Looks like we're already level. That's awesome. We've got to get our red laser jog over. Right in the middle of the R. Perfect. And we're going to measure this distance right here. What do we got? 4.35. 4 so half of 4.35 
It's 2.17. 2.17. Seven ish. I locked that as my center point. Now, with these big bottles, you want to put as much weight as you can in there to keep that down. I got that little bottle filled with sand, and then I'm also going to throw in the other uh, cylinder weight. So I've got two weights in there that are rolling around to make sure that this thing does not slip. Okay? Now, last thing, got to focus. Boom. Reset to where I set my center point. And all we gotta do now is run that job. No folks, your eyes are not playing tricks on you. I lost the footage of the blue bottle being engraved so I had to go with my B-roll. So, enjoy. All right, so our final cup we're gonna do is the stemless wine coolers, which are pretty popular still. Um, so that we're just gonna treat like any other cup. We're gonna use our clamp there. We're gonna clamp that on. We're gonna move our rollers over. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. Make sure that we are level. I'm gonna do a little quick focus. And of course, our quick measurement to know how much space we've got. Now on this one, we don't wanna be engraving down here where it starts to slope down. We basically have this area to work with. So that is, I would say like a total of 2.8 inches tall. So I know that my graphic um, shouldn't exceed that. But I also, you know, whenever my working space is, I also wanna create kind of a little border. So I would say like, you know, two inches max for this area. So I know that I'm, I want my logo to be two inches tall. So I want it to be in the middle of my working area. So I'm just looking at this part right here. This is just two inch. So forget the rest of the ruler. I'm just looking at the two inch section right here. So I know my center is one inch, so, and I want about that much offset from the top, so all I need to do is set my red dot to one inch. And now I know that my graphic will go no taller than there, and it's only gonna come down to the two inch mark. So I'm gonna send that over and run it. Nice. Give it a little clean off. Let's do the other one. Okay, so for the last Patriot Cooler Cup, it uh, opened it up and it was stainless. So that means that if we want to etch this, we're going to have to use some Brilliance laser inks, which you've heard me talk about in my videos before. This is awesome stuff, and we're just going to put a coat on this and then get back in there and laser engrave this last stemless wine cooler. That's it. That's all she wrote. If you haven't watched my other video on Brilliance laser inks, it's great stuff. It's, it's, it's uh, what's used for laser etching on stainless steel products. Uh, I have a whole video on it, but I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below if you want to know where to get it. All right, so we've got our stemless wine cooler. And since this is the exact same size as the last one, all we have to do is I let that dry for five minutes, put a fan on it, let it dry. And funny enough, the setting that I use on my laser for Brilliance Laser Ink is the same exact setting that I use for all powder coated tumblers. So uh, I don't actually need to change a setting on this because it's actually the same setting. 
So all we need to do is run that job. Let's do that now. Nice. Let's go over to the clean off station. <clears throat> now you've seen me in the other video how I clean this off. Just use a sponge and some water. And that stuff just falls right off. No messy residue to clean off. And it's nice and black just the way we want it. Thank you, Yuck Sink. All right, now that we've covered the basics of all that drinkware and all those different styles and how to work around some odd shapes and how to do wraparound graphics, all those can be applied to other drinkware products like glass. Now, glass is a totally different animal when it comes to material. And here's a couple tips that I've learned over the years. So <clears throat> we're gonna talk about settings we're gonna basically do the same exact setup that we did on all the Patriot stuff, but we're gonna change our settings, obviously, in the laser, because what we're doing with glass is we're not actually engraving away anything. Uh, when you laser etch glass, you're not removing any material unless you have like a UV laser or uh, if you have a sandblasting cabinet where you're creating a mask and you're actually blasting away the glass. That's actually removing material and you're actually engraving. What a CO2 laser does is it's actually etching the surface of the glass. And what I mean by that is if you were to take a real close look at what a laser does to glass, you would find that on a microscopic level, what you would see is micro fractures. So you're actually fracturing the surface of the glass really, really, really small. But what the eye sees, if you do it right, is a nice frosted, etched look on glass. So just to clarify that, we're not actually taking away any material. We're just fracturing the surface to get a nice frosted logo on the glass. A couple of things to keep in mind about glass is that, uh, and somebody told me this many years ago, the cheaper the glass, the better it engraves with the CO2 laser. I know that kind of, uh, you know, is a little bit backwards, but Basically, run-of-the-mill glass from like um, uh, regular, you know, uh, bar supply stores or web rest restaurant store that are just, you know, super basic, come in case of 24s, those actually laser etch really well. Uh, now, when a customer brings you some really fine glass, you know, uh, or crystal or lead or uh, really expensive glass, you may find that those don't always etch as nice as some of these glasses that I picked up from the dollar store. The way I do glass is I never use masks. I never use dish soap, which is another thing that you can do to put a thin coat on the glass to diffuse the heat. That's, that's what the, the object of putting dish soap on the glass before you engrave it. The only time I, I ever use dish soap is if a customer brings me an extremely thin wine glass that's just literally looks like, first of all, I, I, I don't even really like doing those, but sometimes if you've got like a long time customer and you wanna help them out, um, you can do those. You just gotta really be mindful of your settings and trying to diffuse the heat as much as possible on those thin wine glasses. Cause one, you know, watt too high uh, and you're definitely not going to use your standard glass setting on, on very thin glass. Don't do that. You'll end up shattering the glass. It'll fracture and you'll be buying some new glasses. So once again, the only time I, I, I use dish soap is on super thin glass. Um, I try to avoid laser engraving crystal if at all possible. I find that it can be problematic and flaky lead filled crystal. Um, is kind of tricky to work with. It's not impossible, um, but I try to 
you know, I usually try to shy away from it and recommend that the customer just get regular glass products if at all possible. So uh, we're not we're going to go ahead and laser logo on a few of these pieces of glass. I'm going to go over my settings with you, and uh, you're going to see that we're not going to use any kind of masking material or any kind of uh, dish soap or any anything like that. We're just going to do do it right on the glass, and then we're going to go ahead and do a quick uh, clean off afterwards and I'll show you the finished product. So let's get to it. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the uh, beer mug first. Uh, pretty much the same setup as we did the uh, Patriot mug. We're gonna use the lip on this one. I'm gonna make sure that my handle's gonna clear. So I don't wanna set it all the way back on the rotary tool. I just wanna set it enough to where the lip's grabbing it. I've got clearance on my handle and I'm gonna set my back wheels right here. Go ahead and level. And let's see if we can get a little focus going on here. I don't do any defocusing or any tricks like that. We're just going to focus right to the glass. Now for this one, let's see. I want my logo, oh, before we, before we measure size, because we're doing center and grave again, let's do, let's make sure that we're centered. So remember, we're going to make sure that the handle's pointing towards us, nice and level. I like to just rest it on the handle if at all possible, and then make my adjustments. until the handle's level. There we go. Just like that. Now, on my logo to be right in the middle and I'm just kind of sizing it with this little bendy ruler. I think two point five inches wide be good now this is a perfect cylinder it has a slight taper on the end so there's no weird stuff going on where I have to do any calculations um, I think yeah let's do it bold let's go 2.5 inches wide so if I've got a 2.5 inches wide logo by 2.5 inches tall my center point is 1.25, right? Because that's half of 2.5, right there. I think I want it kind of centered in between the handle here. So I'm going to bring that right there to where my 2.5 ends here and my top is here. I could probably come down just to scotch and then I'm going to move my center point over to 1.25, right there. All right. So now we're all lined up. We're in focus. We're level. We've got our, our handle uh, level as well. Let's go over to settings and I'll show you how I do this on Corel Draw. Okay. So <clears throat> I've got my graphic here that I'm going to put on the glass beer mug and I've sized it based off what we just did on the ruler. Now for glass in Corel, and I am working with the Epilog M2 Fusion, it's a 120 watt laser, so your settings may differ. But for glass, what I like to do is I like to go 60% black on the color. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna change the dither pattern. Uh, that gray, when you send that gray over to the Epilog, it's gonna change the dither pattern, so uh, which, gets a really nice frosted white look on there. So I'm going to go to 60% black. And you can see that change it to gray. I'm going to go to print. And in the epilogue job manager, I'm going to go to my glass settings. Glass 60% gray with detail. And the settings that I'm going to use are 400 DPI, a speed of 90, 
power of 55 percent I'm going to go bottom up I'm going to use Stucky or Stucky dither pattern as well center engrave raster and I found that I've done a lot of different testing with my wattage of laser I found that these settings are great so if you want to take a screenshot of those settings and you have a very similar setup um, do so now also I would never recommend trying to engrave any kind of glass higher than 400 dpi as the laser is going to be concentrated in in an area for too long and you'll have a higher much higher risk of shattering the glass or fracturing it so try to keep it at 400 and below um, I guess you could go higher but you're gonna have to keep dropping your power and you need a certain amount of power and speed to be able to etch glass efficiently so now I've got my setting selected got no issues I'm gonna send it over to the machine and let's go ahead and run it and see how it turns out Okay, so that job is completed. And I'm not sure if you can see how nice and frosted that is. If you are getting a lot of splash around, you should be able to engrave detail like this if you've got your settings right. I don't know if you can see like the, in, the even the inner part of that screwdriver, there's a little hole there, that actually etched really nice. And all these fine lines around here you should be able to get all of that if your settings are correct and all these little lines right here. If this is blown out or you've got a lot of shattering going on, you're, you're probably running too much power or you need to change your, your dithering pattern. Now, also, when you're finished with glass, you might feel a little bit of flakiness on there. Um, my ultimate goal is not to have any little kind of, you you run your thumb over it and you'll feel kind of like little little edges, little sharp edges. Um, my goal is not to have any of that. So to deal with that, if I do have any of that and it's, it's a, little, a little rough feeling, uh, we're gonna go ahead and actually use water and a magic eraser to just go over it very lightly real quick and we'll see what it looks like after it's cleaned and dry. All right, so you can get some of these. They're all over eBay. I think it's called like, uh, I mean, they're basically just magic erasers, but the the generic is like melamine, I think it's called, and you can get like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll put a link in the description below on where to get like a lot of this right here <laughs> for really cheap. You don't need to buy the, the brand name Magic Eraser. But anyway, what I do is I just put a little bit of water on that, and this will get rid of any jaggedness. And you see the, the etching actually just like disappears when you, when you get it wet. We have to dry it completely again to be able to see it. Uh, but you can go back and forth, up and down, and that will get rid of any little, little flakes that were left over and get a really nice clean etching for you. Um, and it won't scratch the glass either. So let's go ahead and dry that off and see how it looks. All right, so we're back over here at the laser. And I just wanted to bring this back over because when the side lights up the glass, you can actually get a, a better look at the, the laser etching on there. So there's no more, once we did that, that wipe off with the magic eraser, there's no more. It's very smooth. You can see that it's nice and frosted. Now, if you go to use the magic eraser and you find that parts of your graphic are flaking off or whatever, you probably need to adjust your settings and go back to the drawing board. Um, you don't want that to happen. That shouldn't happen. When you're wiping that off with the magic eraser, nothing should flake off. No parts of your graphic should fall out. So this is what you want it to look like. And it's going to take some trial and error with your laser and your wattage. Um, but this is a great starting point, and this is how I do my glass. Engraving drinkware for customers has been a huge part of my laser engraving business over the past eight years. I hope that sharing my technique and the way that I laser engrave drinkware with you will help either push you forward to another level, give you some ideas how to create your own methods. 
and just overall just get value you know we're all this is an industry where I'm, I'm constantly growing constantly learning I'm glad that I found a way to share some of those things with you also make sure that you check out the links in the description I've posted a lot of informational links in there I've got links to all the different tools that I use in this video and some other tools that I use around the shop on a regular basis I also partner with Patriot coolers to get you guys a discount code for 10% off your whole purchase on their site so if you want to head over and check out some of the other great products they have you can use the code laser 911 l a s e r 911 and it'll get you 10 percent off your whole purchase so that's another way uh, that you can check out some of their products firsthand uh, rather than just see them on the video here now last but not least i told you guys earlier in the video how you could get one of these actual cups from the video that i will send to you uh, so like, comment, subscribe to get entered. And in a couple weeks after we let that build up, I'm gonna go through and randomly pick folks that are subscribed to the channel and I will reach out to you and get your shipping information and I will send you one of these pieces of drinkware. So until next time, I'll see you back here at Laser Engraving 911. <music>